Let's look at an example that shows the calculation of the moment of inertia using integration. In this particular example, I have a shaded figure over here, right? It's this part over here. That is defined by the vertical axis, this y-axis in one side. Let me change the color so that becomes a little bit more evident. So it is defined by this vertical axis is defined by this equation over here, and that equation is y equal to x squared, and is defined by this horizontal line, which is at the value uh, of y equal to 9 inches. So what we want to do is we want to calculate the moment of inertia of that area about the x-axis. Important in the calculations of moment of inertia is to define your axis very clearly. Uh, because again, even if you move the axis in a in a parallel fashion, the moment of inertia is going to change. So those those axis calculations are extremely important. All right. So here we're looking at the x-axis. All right. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to define a differential of area. And let me close the camera so I can have a little bit more space to work with. So I'm going to define my dA. Why? Because as we remember, my moment of inertia about my x-axis is defined as my y squared dA. So I need to find that differential of area, and I'm going to explain what that y um, is in that figure. All right, so I'm going to redraw my figure somewhere in here. This is my y-axis in inches, x-axis in inches. And I have uh, some more of a shape like this. Maybe not the best plot, but the idea is that this is defined by y equal to x squared. This value over here is 3 inches, and this value over here is 9 inches. All right, one of the things that I do recommend doing is to define a differential of area that is parallel to your axis of interest. In this case, we are interested in this x-axis. So I'm going to do a differential of area that is going to be this. That's going to be my differential of area. It's a little rectangle. The height is not going to be much, right? That's my uh, very small value. So can I do that summation through the integral? And uh, since it's going to be very small, I can say that this height is going to be dy. And the width of that rectangle is going to be defined by x. So I can say that my dA is going to be x dy. Okay, that's going to be my differential of area. So if we had the definition of moment of inertia that we draw uh, on, the, on the top, right, is y squared dA, what is that y squared? Well, that y is going to be the distance from the differential of area to my x-axis, right? That's going to be my y. All right, so my moment of inertia about the x-axis is going to be this integral of y squared dA, okay? Well, we already find out my dA, so that's going to be equal to my integral of y squared. And my dA, we said that it was x dy. Okay, so now we have this dy, which means that we can actually define some limits to that integral. It's going to be limits in my y-axis. So it's going to be limits between 0 
and 9 inches. 0 and 9 inches. So the dy is telling me, okay, my limits are in my y-axis. The other thing that we can do is, well, we have x and y combined in this, in this equation. And we need to do everything in terms of y because that's where my differential is, right? So I need to find an equation that helps me uh, make a, um, a relationship between x and y. And for that, we can use this equation over here. If we solve for x, we can say that x is going to be equal to y, the square root of y, or y to the 0 0.5. The same thing, right? y to the 0 0.5. So if we go back to my ix, my ix is going to be the integral from 0 to 9 of y squared. This x becomes y to the 0 0.5 y. Okay, if I'm multiplying those two values in the parentheses, that's equivalent to adding, adding the subscripts, or superscripts, sorry. So this is y to the 2.5 dy. And that is not too bad to do, that integral. So that will be the integral of y to the 3.5 over 3.5 evaluated from 0 to 9. And when I do that evaluation, I get 9 to the 3.5 over 3.5 minus 0, right? Because when, once I have 0 as y, that equation gives me 0. And that gives me equal to 624.8 inches to the 4. So that's going to be my answer for this problem.